Uh, it stands for Saccharomyces boulardii, B-O-U-L-A-R-D-I-I. -I. It's it's basically, it's um, interestingly, it's baker's yeast. It's the it's the organism in baker's yeast that causes the bread to rise, but it's non-pathologic in the human gut. And I often worried about when I first used it because I thought, oh my God, these people with yeast sensitivities might just get creamed by giving them a Saccharomyces yeast, although it's not Canada. But studies in Europe, especially in France, have shown that S. at high doses is the best treatment for AIDS-related gut syndromes. AIDS patients have terrible gut pathology, and it's the very best treatment for that. I really like S. Uh, but you have to use a lot of it. Pardon? We use 0.2 milligrams once a week injected into the thigh. Cardiomyopathy. Growth hormone has actually been used to treat cardiomyopathy at the University of North Carolina. I found this out when I was dying of cardiomyopathy. I found out there was a prospective study showing improvement in cardiac output on growth hormone. Um, <clears throat> I don't think circuitograd therapy works very well. Peroxynitrite scavenging, very important. Improving mitochondrial function, an example of that would be Hawthorne uh, and other things. Improving microcirculation, very critical. Uh, area. And uh, <clears throat> palliating Q, which is what you were talking about in terms of pulsed therapy for cardiac output. There's some very, you know, a, a lot of, most cardiologists think oh, in, right here. This is what they're thinking. When they see, when they see a person with a dying heart, a cardiomyopathic, diastolic or systolic variety, doesn't matter, the way they think is not cure them. The only cure they know of is transplant, except for the possibilities of Drexler's study. So they're now thinking, maybe we could inject them with bone marrow. So the way they think is they palliate. They palliate by adjusting preload and afterload. Typically in the left ventricular dysfunction, what they do is they reduce the preload with Lasix, diuretic, and after load, they bring it down with alpha-beta blockade. That's the classic therapy for cardiomyopathy. It would be a killer therapy for you. The last thing you need is Lasix and diastolic failure. And the afterload reducers can bring your pressure down so you have no microcirculation. So the palliative mode of thought applicable to systolic failure is anathema to diastolic failure, which is why we don't have any therapy for it, because this is all they know. By the way, a, a trained at Emory, which is a big cardiology institution. And this is all I was taught to deal with heart failure. This is what you do until we became more mechanistic and started dealing with coronary disease by unplugging the plumbing. You know, it's another area that doesn't apply here. Poor sign growth factors. The best thing short of your own bone marrow could be to take growth factors, cell signaling factors, from a pig and a pig's heart. Poor sign, heart. If you take the heart muscle of a human or a pig, and you, it's a long thing, and you section the heart muscle and look at it on end, the percentage of the, of the cell that is mitochondria varies from 20 to 50% depending on where you cut. So on a general cut, 40% of the heart cross-sectional cut is mitochondria, which means, think about it, means that if you grind up pig heart and take it down and take off the low molecular extractions. The low molecular weight peptides, which organize the gene expression, are 40% mitochondrial, significantly greater than bone marrow, by two orders of magnitude at least. And it's a lot easier to take pig heart by mouth than just have someone take bone marrow out of your back and inject it one time into your coronary vessel, because this can be given repeatedly. So we begged and pleaded and conjoled the, uh, <coughs> the atrium to make pig heart, uh, preferably fetal pig heart, but that's too small. So we did finally agree to get them to do this. And so uh, we will have pig heart by August. And we'll run the, one of the first studies to see if pig heart low molecular weight peptide cell signaling factors taken orally can improve the heart as well as bone marrow transplantation, or bone marrow infusion might, which I think 
was very possible. Autologous stem cell transfusion. There's nothing wrong with the consideration of going to Germany and have uh, Dr. Drexler stick your bone marrow into your coronary vessel. I don't see any wrong, anything wrong with the idea. DC magnetic field is a very interesting uh, form of therapy. Since I'm a physicist, I like this kind of therapy. <laughs> but uh, DC fields, which are different than electromagnetic fields, we're all in a DC field right now. It's called the Earth's magnetic field. And in Texas, it's coming in from the northeast, about 30 degrees from the horizontal and going right into the ground at about 0.5 gauss. If we raise that magnetic field to about 20 gauss or even higher, 5,000 gauss, we cause valence electron precessional frequencies that can actually accelerate every enzymatic reaction in your body. It stimulates stem cells and we think does a lot of other things. And so we have uh, an experiment in mind using a low Gaussian field at about 20 gauss and having patients uh, lay on that bed and see if we can induce a stem cell action. And think of it as a way to transplant your own bone marrow by just laying on a bed. Think of it that way. Now, I want to... Um, I think what I'd like to do to end, because it's, it's getting late, is um, I want to go to, to this slide, which really summarizes the future of uh, treatment. Uh, before this uh, day, our treatment was called protocol management. We basically, every physician across the country who deals with CFIDS has their own protocol. There's the Dr. Cheney protocol, and there's the Dr. Soso protocol, and you almost have as many protocols as you have doctors. And people tend to gravitate for one reason or another to one protocol or another. Try this, try that, try that. I think where we're going, where we're going is we're going to go from a protocol approach, which basically grabs the handful of things that seem to work on enough people for us to think it might be worthy of using, and we bring it into a protocol, and then we give it to everybody like one shoe fits all people. We're going to move from a protocol approach to an algorithmic approach in which we treat you with agent X, agent Y, and agent Z, the best ideas we can think of. We then monitor your diastolic parameters in milliseconds, mind you, and velocities of meter per second, and then follow that toward improving. And then it either succeeds or it fails. And if it succeeds, we have a therapy for you directed right at the problem. And if it fails, we go into something else until we find by hook or crook those set of things that would most work in an individual patient. So it's not one shoe fits all. It's whatever shoe fits you, whatever that may be. The only problem that we're less sure about, other than the methodology, is what is X, Y, and Z. And if I, if I had my magic wand right now, what I would give for X, Y, and Z, I would give, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I would basically attack the cellular basis of energy, and I'd attack it with magnesium, which I think is very critical. Magnesium blocks calcium entry to the, cal to the mitochondria. It's a vasodilator, therefore it helps microcirculation without dropping your pressure out. Uh, it, it raises the brain uh, neuronal threshold potential, so your brain is less toxic. It does a lot of things, and you're, and you're low in it. It's, it's also very much directed to this disease. I take the magnesium. Um, I think something is, is necessary, uh, possibly for hypercoagulable people, such as a natokinase or lumbrokinase. I think that um, other things that might be important uh, might be something to stimulate SOD. Uh, something may be important to pull out heavy metals. And then after that is done, we'll see what that does to this. And then we'll come in with pig heart, oral or injected, low molecular weight peptides. And for the brave, we can send you to Germany for your own bone marrow transplant procedure. Actually, it's a bone marrow infusion procedure. And then see what happens. And uh, the key to this is the understanding of the linkage of diastolic dysfunction as the epicenter of the dysfunctionality of the disease and most everything else compensatory issues. To see that, and it's an energy problem. And the other thing that's necessary is to measure 
a object to parameter that is aimed directly at energy production, and that is the Dysault parameters, which can be measured in milliseconds. Now, here's one of the problems, is that no, very few machines can measure these accurately, reproducibly. The only one I know of, actually, is the Vivid 7. The beauty about the Vivid 7 is that it's all digital and can be digitized onto a disk and shipped across the continent and read on another Vivid 7 as if you were in that place. So you can ship your heart around on a disk. Literally. Pop it into Vivid 7 and it's as if your heart was transported a thousand miles, allowing the investigator to actually measure these parameters, even so that you don't have to keep coming back and forth to have it measured. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's our current direction, our current goal. And I thank you very much.